Thank you so much. What a pleasure to be back here with these students again. South Middle seventh graders are pretty awesome. I want to tell you, the speaker, you're in for a treat and they're in for a treat because this is a great group. Um, we're just happy to be here every month. I think this is our fourth time and it's really exciting that people like Pastor Lewis would give their time to come speak. And I know you're gonna be in for a treat, but I just wanna introduce him a little bit. He's a very special person to so many people, including me. He was actually born in Richmond, Virginia, but he's been here for plus 40 years, so I'd say he's almost native and shows how much he loves it. And I think everybody in the state and beyond knows him because he has such a great outreach and he cares about people. And I know he's been pretty excited to come here today. So he is married to wonderful Becky. He has three wonderful children and two adorable grandchildren. And they have lived in Morgantown, as I said, for 40 plus years. But I got to know him because he graduated from West Virginia University. No surprise to some of you who have already figured it out, he was our star basketball player seven foot center and very famous all the way around. But after he left that, he went into pro. He played in the pros in France. Can you imagine how much fun that would be to play in Paris? But also he has had such an interesting career after that. You know, a pharmaceutical salesman, in business, in finance, and so many other things. And then he went off on a path that he'll tell you about, where he went to several churches to be a pastor and then started his own church. So I think there's so much to learn here about his pathway, what it takes, and I'm really anxious to hear what the secret of his success is. Because even though it, you might think, oh, he was a basketball player, I don't think that's a secret to his success in the long run. So I'm interested for you to hear that. I'm also hoping we have time for a little fun facts about him because there's so many funny stories that I've heard about what it takes to live in this world when you're seven foot. You need a special bed, you need a special chair, you have different things. And then he might even share with you some of the personal things about him. One thing I know, he's a wonderful singer and dancer and he's got some funny, um, I don't know, hobbies. He collects fountain pens, and he's a little bit of a shopaholic. So at this time, I'll introduce to you Pastor Junius Lewis. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. I appreciate the opportunity on behalf of the school and the counselors and the teachers. It is a joy to be here. Uh, I appreciate Donna's wonderful introduction. My name is Junius Lewis. I hail from Richmond, Virginia. But I just want to share some of my story. Uh, people often ask me, you know, how did you come to Morgantown? How did you come to the university? Well, let me tell you a story about a little, no, not little, a skinny, lanky kid who didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. Can you imagine being this tall and not liking basketball? I did not like basketball. But one day, I was out in one of the shopping centers. Donna told you I like to shop. And a coach saw me. His name was Tony McAndrews. And Coach McAndrews was a coach at the University of Richmond at that time. And he said, can I work with you to help you grow into your frame? And I was like, what do you mean? He said, you're so tall, you're so uncoordinated. He said, if you would let me work with you over the summer, I'm going to help you to be comfortable in your skin. And every Saturday, he came to pick me up. He took me to a playground. For four weeks, we didn't do anything but for basketball. He says, do you have a jump rope? I'm like, they're all too short. Here's my point. Obstacles can be opportunities. I went to a hardware store, downtown Richmond, 
and I bought a 10-foot electrical cord. Now, when you're uncoordinated, you can't walk and talk and chew gum at the same time, and you're using the electrical cord to learn how to jump rope. Can you imagine how many whelps I had on my leg? But by the third week, crisscross, jumping backwards. After four weeks, he brought out a basketball. And then he challenged me. He said, I want to send you to a basketball camp. I was like, I don't want to go. He said, the best players in the nation are going to be there. I definitely don't want to go. But he said, I think it would help you. I said, well, my family, we can't afford it. My mother was a beautician. She had her own hair shop. My dad drove a tractor trailer for a living. And so I was trying to give him excuses. How many of you ever give people excuses? OK. I wasn't the only one. So I gave him all these excuses. He says, well, I tell you what. He said, I notice in your kitchen you all don't have a dishwasher. Who washes the dishes? I said, I wash the dishes. He said, well, your tuition for the camp will be paid for because you'll wash dishes. I couldn't think of any more excuses. I take a train from Richmond, Virginia to Hornsdale, Pennsylvania. I get out, I walk to the camp, and the best players in the country are there. I'm like, now what I do? Here's what happened. I met another coach. He was a big guy. His name was Mark Kessler. He said, I'm going to work with you every day, and I'm going to help you be a, a great basketball player. And every day he did. And at the end of that camp, with the best players in the country, I make it through. I'm like, Phew, I just get to go home. But at the award ceremony, my friend said, they just called your name. I was like, I didn't do anything. I had won the Most Improved Player Award for the whole camp. So I got this great big old trophy. And what had happened, the year before that, my grandmother bought me my first basketball. She let me put it in her backyard. She would wash the clothes, and I would go out there and bounce the ball, and that old clay red dirt would get all over her clothes. Not one time did she complain. And coming back on the train with this big old trophy, I'm crying. I got tears in my eyes because I wanted my grandmother to know you did something good for me. When I walked into my house, there were five of the big brown grocery bags lined up across the living room. Every college in the country had reached out to me. Louisville, Notre Dame, Maryland, Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State. All of these colleges had written. And now you go from being a kid who doesn't like basketball, you're thinking, I may be OK at this. But that was a huge turning point in my life. And here's what I want you to realize. You may not be good at something now, but it does not mean that you won't excel in it later. That tall, skinny, uncoordinated kid was kind of like the ugly duckling. Every school recruited me. And any given night in Richmond, there were about eight players in my city that were Division I prospects. So you saw all of these college coaches visiting all of the time. Well, fast forward, I narrowed my choices down between West Virginia University, the University of Maryland, and Oral Roberts University. Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma was a little too far away. I'm a mama's boy, I love my mother. The University of Maryland had four other guys, six, nine. But true story, the coach at that time, Coach Lefty Drizelle, he came to my house. He pulled up in a big red, white Cadillac, 
He came in with a big three ring notebook. He opened it up, he kissed my mother's hand. He said, here's the graduation rate of all of my players who've ever played for me at Maryland. He had a 100% graduation rate. My mother was like, sign now, boy, sign now. But I finally decided on coming to West Virginia University. People often ask me, they say, well, why did you stay? I fell in love with the people here in Morgantown. Here's my point. You have to bloom where you're planted. Find people who love you, not for what you do for them, but what they do for you. So who speaks into your life? What voices do you listen to? Do you listen to the voices that tell you you're not good enough, you're ugly, you're fat, you're skinny, you're uncoordinated? Or do you listen to the voices of the people who say, you really are good at that. You really are cute. You are handsome. You can do it. Don't ever let anybody dictate your future. I had to learn that. I had to cultivate my own future because I had to learn to believe in myself. Here's what else I want you to understand. You're going to have a lot of people that pull at you. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to try to influence you. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to try to get you to do a whole lot of things. Let me say it to you this way. Show me your friends and I'll see your future. Let me see who you're hanging with. Let me see who you're vibing with. Let me see who is in your inner circle. Why is that so important? Because as I grew up, and I'll just hit this and quit, but I spent 30 years going in a federal prison, ministering to the inmates there. And all of them told me the same thing. I wish I had a listen to somebody who genuinely cared about me when I was young. Because when you're your age right now, you think you know everything. You don't. And I've had grown men, 6'7", 280 pounds, just break down and cry as I've hugged them. Because you know what we all need? I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your social economic status is. I don't care if you live in a mansion or you live in a hut. We all need love. We need somebody who cares about us. We need somebody who genuinely wants to help you. I had a wise friend tell me years ago, she said, every school that you go to visit, I want you to think about this. If they can buy you, they can sell you. And you need to tell them, I'm not for sale. <coughs> the decisions that you make will stick with you for a lifetime. The decisions that you make will stick with you for a lifetime. My freshman year, I'm having a great time. I'm away from home. I had a teammate. He grew up close to Morgantown. We were always together. I didn't have a roommate in college because when they asked me, what is it going to take for you to sign to come to West Virginia University? I said, I want a room to myself. Because I saw how them college kids lived. They were slobs. I'm a neat freak. I had to have everything in its place. So I had, can you imagine? I had the same dorm room for four years, room 2211 in Towers. The physical plant at West Virginia University, they welded two beds together so that I'd have a bed long enough for me to sleep in. But my teammate, we had a guy come up to us. And the guy reached into his pocket. He pulled out a whole bunch of money. And he said, do you want to make some? Now I'm a city boy. I'm like, what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to move a little something for me. I said, you want me to move what for you? He said, just a little of this and a little of that. You know what he wanted me to do? He wanted me to sell drugs. Now, I'm not rich. And growing up, we weren't poor. But this is what I told him. 
I said, if I do something to Junius Lewis, I do it to Junius Lewis. What you're asking me to do could hurt or kill somebody else. My other friend decided that he was going to try a new profession. You know what happened? Have you ever heard this story? If you dance to the music, you got to pay the piper. Eventually, you know what happened? He got caught. Because you may think you're going to get away with something, but somebody's always watching you. Somebody's always looking to see what you're doing and how you're doing it. Somebody's always looking at who you're running with. Again, choose your friends wisely. This young man got in trouble. Didn't have to, but he did. I learned a valuable lesson. Don't always take everything that somebody wants to give you. It may have a string attached. Make sense? Growing up and playing basketball, after a while it got to be fun. We traveled, we stayed in nice hotels. I took my books every time we went on the road. Some of you may know, some of you may not. One of my teammates was Coach Huggins. Coach Huggins never took books on the road. He was smart though, the guy could have been a road scholar. I took my books. You gotta study, you gotta work hard you've got to excel at what it's going to take to make you successful. And then don't let anybody else turn you around. What people say to you and how they say it is important. If I say to you, I don't know you, what's your name? Dylan. Dylan, Dylan I don't think you're going to amount to anything. How does that make you feel? Bad. But what if I said, Dylan, I think you can earn a scholarship. I think you can be successful in life. And more importantly, Dylan, I want to help you. How does that make you feel? Good. Everybody needs to be encouraged. Everybody needs to be encouraged. As a pastor, I've been doing it for over 30 some years. I need to be encouraged. Donna and her husband, they always encourage me. Her father encouraged me. Sometimes you just need to realize that you have people who believe in you. But more importantly, you got to believe in yourself. When I realized that I could do so much more than I ever thought I could. Boy, a whole new world opened up to me. I stayed on one year as a graduate assistant for Coach Gail Catlett here. And one day he said to me, he said, Jay, he said, you're young. Why don't you go overseas and play? I'm like, well, Coach, I never thought about that. That was on a Monday. On a Wednesday, I drove to Richmond to see my mother. On that following Sunday, I was on a plane out of Pittsburgh going to Nice, France. I didn't know a soul. So now you've lost your family, your support system. You don't know anybody. You don't speak the language. And I cried for three solid weeks on the French Riviera. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. I cried like a baby. I miss my family. I miss my friends. But I believe there's a principle in life that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. I met a Dutch couple, Fritz and Aletta Schwiers. Fritz and Aletta Schwiers, they were great people. Fritz was a retired banker, and we became friends. But I tell you what, for the first time in a long time, I had to stand on my own. It helped that I had a good family. It helped that I had friends that loved me. 
but I had to then learn how to make it on my own. And I was fighting for a spot playing with a bunch of French guys. And I tell you what, boy, how many of you ever watched the movie Gladiator? Well, I tell you, in basketball overseas, whatever American outduels the other American, his team usually wins. And all of a sudden now, in college, I averaged about 10 points a game my junior, my senior year. But overseas, how many points do you think I averaged? I heard 20. Somebody else? 30. 30? 40 points a game. What happened? This guy's been covering man this sports for a long time. You know what happened? I finally believed in Junius Lincoln Lewis Jr. I realized that I could do all of the things that I was told I couldn't do because I believed in me. You know what happened back in June this summer? My youngest son, both, both of my boys earned football scholarships. They didn't play basketball, they played football. Imagine that. But the youngest one and I, he said, Dad, I'm going to Spain. He said, uh, why don't you go with me? I'm like, no, you don't want to hang out with your daddy. He said, yeah, daddy. He said, you should go. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll go if you go back to France with me and I can show you where I used to live. So 42 years later, my son is hanging out in the town that I used to live in. He is actually practicing with the current team that is playing. And I got to see my old general manager 42 years later. I sit there with tears in my eyes. I'm like, how cool is this? Here's my point to y'all. Don't take for granted the people that are in your life. They're there for a reason. Don't take for granted your teachers, your counselors, your close friends. They're there to help you. So if you want a friend, be a friend to somebody. Be a friend and be a loyal friend. I've been blessed to now not just live overseas, but travel to some of the most beautiful places in the world. Looking back at the articles in June, I was like, man, dude, you had it going on. 40 points a game. Yeah, that's pretty good. But you know what was more important than that? The friendships and the relationships that I met. We need people in our lives. And you especially need good people in your life. Is that all right? OK. I set my timer here. So who speaks into your life? What's the message that they're saying to you? Do you believe it? Do you believe in yourself? And what words are you speaking over your own life? You can either buy into the negativity, you can buy into all the discouragement, or you can hold on to the good things that really matter. I'm suggesting to you today, stay positive. Stay positive. And don't fall into any traps. And don't underestimate the power of working hard, doing what is right, and taking care of your business. Okay? Questions? 